This has got a lot of sass. It will not work the 11th time. <laughs> now that was an adventure. Oh my God, we have something that's fun. And then you come out of the turbulence and you're flying. That's really clever actually. This is like Irish Kaylee chaos. Oh, it's very different. Girly bop of my dreams. Hey Eurovision fans, today we're checking out the entries for Eurosong, that's Ireland's national final. We're gonna listen and react to all six songs, see what we think, and analyze could Ireland get their first qualification since 2018. Also, stick around for the end of the video where I give you my top six. So, let's kiki. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Tom. I'm an Irish Eurovision analyst and you can find all of this stuff on my Eurovision channel. So I have been very patient this week waiting until all six of the Eurosong songs have been released. They're released one by one on the Ray Darcy show, which was a very painful show to listen to. I wanted to wait until all six of them were released before I did this reaction. So I have seen the reactions of people on Twitter online. There seems to be a lot of excitement. People are saying that Ireland's finally turned a corner and we're less awful than usual. I think a lot of that is just how low the expectations are for our national final in general. But I am very much looking forward to these six songs today and hopefully having the same enthusiasm that a lot of people are having this year. So any enthusiasm for the Irish national final for me is very joyous to see. As you may know, last year I did a video what's wrong with Ireland in Eurovision. We've had a lot of problems. We're ranked second last in the last 10 years in terms of average ranking. And there's no signs that we're getting better. There's no plan, there's no upward trajectory. If you haven't seen that video, please do go watch it. But long story short, if you have to sum it all up into one sentence, the problem is that our broadcaster RT just don't care and don't put enough resources and people into the team to deal with Eurovision. They really just don't give an F at all. They don't give one F, they don't give two Fs. They don't give 0.01 Fs. Another main thing I said in that video was that I really wanna see more diversity. 2022 Eurosong final was the whitest of white bread. Uh, last year was a little bit better. There was a bit more variation. It looks like this year we might have a bit more different viewpoints. Okay, we're gonna to listen to the songs in the same order that they, that they were released. Some of the songs haven't been released, a little bit messy, there's distribution issues. That's the type of thing that RTE needs to be on top of. But I do have full th three full versions as well. I'm gonna to have to distort the audio as always. If you wanna hear the original audio, you can hear it on my Patreon, so go check that out. So first up, we have Erica Cody. She's saying, love me like I do, which makes me think of that song. Love me like I do, love, love, love. I don't know if that came into anyone else's head as well. Okay, so very excited to start my journey through your song. I wanna know my secret bang. Ooh. Ooh, I think we're gonna get a bop. She did tell us she was giving us a bop. Okay, getting a slight retro 80s feel. She looks gorgeous in this picture. Really, really pretty. This is a good like build up so far into presumably a very good pop drop, hopefully. Come on, Erica. Okay, I'm on board with that, that's pretty cute. I think she's gonna be giving us dance as well. I think she's a pretty strong dancer. She's very fashionable as well. Ooh, nice kind of like double chorus at the end. That dun 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 is lovely as well. Okay, really, really great opening. I hope she's gonna mix it up now as we go on. Okay, I need to listen to the lyrics as well. I'm Venus stepping into the light, nice. You are Venus. I have got a bop on. This is a this is an easy bop. Like this is a groundbreaking pop, but it's solid. Hmm, okay. Let's go for the chorus again. Yeah, it's really upbeat and it's bubbly. It's boppy, girly bop of my dreams. Yeah, some of the production, it feels very, it is that kind of nostalgic 80s, which has kind of been a little bit done to death. It sounds quality production. So I'll give it that, definitely. Okay, where's she going now? It's Misha, she's speaking in Irish. It's Misha Gro? I kind of know what she's saying. She's saying it's Misha, which means I am. Oh, the Irish bit was kind of short. Okay, so it wasn't too much. Okay, give us a big endo. Okay, she's gone into a key <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a little Eurovision by numbers, but it's poppy. I, I give her a pass. She's got to really give it all night. She needs to explode on the stage. 
But yeah, it's you can't not get a bop bomb with this because it's got a really accessible beat. Mmm. Lovely. Really, 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 really great starting. So look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna BS you. <laughs> That's not the most groundbreaking pop song that I've ever heard. But it's solid. It sounds really well done. It, it sounds like she's a quality artist and she's got good producers. That doesn't sound messy. It sounded really cleaned, like they'd gone through several edits of the song and cleaned it all up. She's awesome. I really like her. I, I already did a story about her on my Eurovision News update and she's got amazing fashion. But yeah, it's not the most groundbreaking pop song ever. And you know, it's got the key change and it's got some lines in Irish. It is a little bit still this writing songs for Eurovision that we got last year with Wild Youth. This is a bit of the same. And this is one of the habits that Irish songwriters need to get out of is this thing that you have to have a key change. You have to put in some generic Irish. A lot of people have been calling for Irish in our national final. I think it has to occur naturally. If there is an Irish speaking artist who wants to submit a song, that's fine. The fact of the matter is Irish is not very widely spoken in the majority of Ireland. So putting in an Irish thing, it's just not really an everyday thing. It's a little bit gimmicky. I think it's still cute, it's fine, but it's still that kind of approach of how can we use a gimmick to get around our Eurovision woes instead of let's just send quality songs like it's fine i think i don't expect that suddenly there's going to be this overnight epiphany in irish songwriters that they're going to get all over their bad habits but yes that is kind of the thing we need to move away from like you wouldn't get a swedish song in melody festival and that just goes into like swedish for one line to like show off swedish to like give it an, an, a cultural feel they don't need to rely on those type of tricks overall really really positive the, the song's very upbeat i think it's going to lend to her strengths as a dancer so i'm expecting her to come out now with really high energy i think the song is a little bit on the generic side it's still enjoyable but like this doesn't scream automatic qualifier to me at all i think especially when you look at brooke that's rich didn't qualify and i felt like that was less gimmicky and was a little bit more current and that was had maybe a slightly stronger melody or a little bit more original melody and she didn't qualify with the televote or the jury so if that didn't qualify why would this what's going to be better so is she going to elevate fashion wise i think almost definitely i didn't think brooke's fashion choices were perfect uh, is she going to elevate dancing was what is she going to do that makes this a better package so that she can qualify that's up to her she's got a decent product to start with she's working on a small stage which is definitely difficult for her because if she was on a bigger stage she could move around more and she could bring on more props so she's constrained by how small the late late show studio is we need to get off the mother loving <laughs> late late show we all know that though that's that's common knowledge let's go to the second act elsha and she's also got a bit of Irish and her song is called Gatobin which means suddenly I think it means suddenly <laughs> my Irish is so bad does Google Translate have Irish yes it does mean suddenly god okay <laughs> 13 years of Irish was not for nothing I did learn one phrase look this is only 224 which is a little bit short wanna know my secret bank oh <laughs> that's a very bam starting Mirror, mirror on the wall. Oh, it's kind of fun. And it's quite different as well. Oh, it's very different. It's, I don't think we've had anything that's kind of like this out there on your song in years. So this is, yeah, this is definitely a new avenue. Oh, wow. Oh, it's kind of rocky, Celtic. I hear a tin whistle. The tin whistle isn't great, but it's like a good, powerful energy. Okay, so Gama Let's Go means excuse me. I didn't cut that second bit. Something about English and Irish. Okay, I really like the attitude. This has got a lot of sass. And it's different, like why not try something different? We tried basic pop, it didn't work. Oh, this is like chaos. This is like Irish Kaylee chaos. Some of the instrumentation sounds are not clean enough. Oh, okay. I like some new vocal stuff coming in the background here. It, it feels like it's got a spirit, it's got an energy, it's got a viewpoint. I can't pick out what she's saying there. Oh, nice guitar coming in as well. 
She's saying, I'm all padded on doggedy on leverage. That means, can I go to the toilet? <laughs> These are the type of phrases we learn as kids. So there's, there's humor in here. Oh, it's kind of like a key change. I don't know if that was technically a key change. That tin whistle sounds too messy in my opinion. I want that cleaner. But this is really powerful so far. And this is epic now. Some of that electronic production sounds quite epic. Oh wow, just boom, down. <laughs> that was, no, that was an adventure. That was very, very intense. And she only had two and a half minutes there. So she's got an extra 30 seconds. I really, really want her to use those last 30 seconds. Maybe put a break in the last, just like go slowly, do like a slower, like calm moment for 20 seconds or something, and maybe give us some of that instrumentation, but in like a prettier way, because it would contrast against this like craziness that's going on. But that was really exciting. <laughs> that was so different, super unique. We've never had anything like that in your song that I can recall anyway, like what she's up against. She's up against 20 different brands of white bread. So, you know, she's, an onion. <laughs> She's something like completely different. So that's really fun and exciting. It felt like this like Irish Kaylee chaos. So I could hear the Irish sounds, but with rock elements like interspersed with them. Actually, funny enough, I just did my Vibbeer video where they were able to meld ethnic elements with modern elements in such a beautiful fusion. And that kind of felt like a pretty decent attempt at doing an Irish version of that, these like traditional Irish elements with this like heavy rock beats. Even though there's some elements of that that didn't perfectly work for me, I love the ambition, the thought, the originality. This is super original. I've never heard anything like that before. It's not like there's like 50 of these on Irish radio. We don't no normally hear stuff like this. The Irish in this felt a little bit more natural than with Erica. Elsha here was saying uh, Gamaleshkel, which means excuse me, and Amulkadagam Dulgadi on Lehrish, which means can I go to the toilet? So when we're in primary school, like these are the first phrases that we learn. Can I go to the toilet? Excuse me. <laughs> like I'm here on Shaw. Small little things like that that make us think that we can speak Irish when really we're four years old. So I like that she's putting that in. I wonder what the, the story of the song is. Mirror, mirror on the wall, tell me the truth, how I lost it all. There's a couple of things that I wanted to say, but I've lost my vocabulary. Oh, I wonder if she's talking about the Irish language. Hendo tree car cook she shocked. Okay, so that's counting from one up to seven. Neil Gagel gum niasmo niasmo. So I don't have any more Irish. So she is speaking about. Oh, I ah, that's really clever actually, and it's actually really true because Irish language is really under threat because it's just really not spoken that much, which is weird because every other European country speaks their own language. Uh, and then she's saying Gutalban. Oh no, I don't know this part. Gomaleska. Okay, I don't know this part. Excuse me. Excuse me. Do you want to be a star? Is far gago brishta na barla klishta. I think that means it's better to have broken Irish than na barla klishta. Barla is English. Klishta, I think, means clever. So maybe like good. It's better to have broken Irish than good English. I think that's what that means. Then she's counting again. And then she's saying the bit where she's like, can I go to the toilet? And then Neil ain gago agomnius mo again. Yeah, so that's what the song is. The song is about her losing her language or just about the language in general. So that's really, I'm, I'm really, enamored with this really that is so cool and it's really topical and this feels like a natural way to include Irish because she's literally talking about the language so it's not like putting it in as a gimmick it is a genuine inclusion as part of the story of her song really 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 cool I just wanted to use those last 30 seconds that tin whistle sounds so effing messy to me it just sounds like a kid's playing it it doesn't sound like someone who's really competent on a tin so tin whistle is a traditional irish instrument i'll put a picture here i just want that to sound cleaner because there's already lots of chaos and i think if you add in someone playing the tin whistle badly it's just like maybe a bit too much getting towards dump dumpster fire so if that was cleaned up and then use that 30 seconds give us a slow bit maybe explain the song in that in bit in a smart way just say i don't know i can't come up with it on the spot but you know what i mean explain that the song is about Irish being lost because I didn't pick it up on the first listen. It was a little tough. And it would be a shame if there's people who think this song is not serious and don't realize that there's a super cool message behind it. Give us a slower part. Maybe give us a traditional element. That's selling out, going into like a traditional Irish ditty thing. Do it. I give you permission, Elsha. I will not judge you. We love you. Do us a beautiful Enya 30 seconds explaining what the song is to anyone who hadn't picked it up at that point. But I'm super excited. You can see I already think that is something that could qualify. And if it doesn't qualify, I would be so 
proud of it because we're like, oh my God, we have something that's fun. It's exciting. It's showing off our culture. We aren't just crap white bread music monsters. We actually do have music. <laughs> See, we have creative people. This is a creative person who can represent us. <laughs> okay, anyway, sorry, I need to calm down. This is what I want. I want to be excited about my national final and this is exciting to me. This is different. Anyway, we still got four songs left, so there might be someone even better. Okay, let's go to our third song. It's Isabella Carney singing uh, Let Me Be The Fire. So this is one of the two songs that hasn't been released officially. So thank you to Eurovision World because they managed to link me to a version online. So Isabella, I believe, is half Australian, half Irish. She lived in Donegal, I think. So I listened to the, I didn't listen to the songs, but I listened to the interviews on the Ray Darcy show. God, he talks an absolute ton of shite. Okay, uh, let's put the camera down a little bit. I talk shite as well, but at least my shite's about Eurovision. Isabella Carney won a number secret bank. Mm. Okay. Slightly different feel, like lower energy than the previous two. Okay. Kind of like... Is this going to be a little bit more electric feel? This does feel a little bit more like Eurosong 2022 vein. Okay, get the beat there. Okay, quite a long verse. How long was that? Almost a minute. Okay, into the chorus finally. Oh. Okay, I do like that mix up. I do that like that kind of like bassy, sexy beat. That's cool. Felt it took a little bit too long to get there. But, okay, that's a nice beat. It's kind of like, feels like easy listening dance. What's she gonna do now? Cause this second verse sounds the same as the first, I think. I don't know where she's gonna evolve from here. This feels quality, like this feels like a, a decent song, but again, it's that kind of your song of old of stuff that's okay, but won't qualify. Okay, that sounds a little bit bass here in the second verse. I think I wanted even a little bit more than that though. I just don't feel like this is like breaking any boundaries. Okay, a little bit of ad living coming in now. Yeah, it's like easy listening dance. It's extremely inoffensive. You don't have to be offensive with your song, but I do like that ad living. That ad living is pretty, and it is act adding a little bit extra something to the song. That was grand, that was fine. There was there was definitely nothing wrong with that. I felt a tiny bit underwhelmed. I was trying to think where is the type of place you'd listen to this like easy listening dance type of song. Yeah, I thought it was okay. I don't know, is, is that the type of song that people are gonna be like scrambling for their phone to, to vote for? I don't think so, I think it's fine, but nobody would have it as their last place, but I don't think anyone would have it as their first place either. It would just be in the middle of a lot of people's lists. And I don't know if that's a good strategy when you're going into a televote only semi-final because people only vote for their top one, two, three maybe. They're not gonna vote for their fifth and sixth favorite. Juries will vote for their fifth and sixth favorite, but there's no juries in the semi-final. So I think juries would actually respect that because it felt pretty well produced and you know it had a pretty safe progression it didn't go crazy at all it was definitely a lot more grounded than Elsha was lyrically I wasn't picking anything particularly magical I think let me be the fire maybe is like let me support you cool topic but I think it's been done quite a lot and anyway let's see maybe she can elevate it live I, I don't know what she can do to really take this to next level don't think the music has the song has a lot of highs and lows that would lend itself to some dramatic things happening on the stage I would imagine it's gonna be her standing there, maybe some dancers either side. Is that gonna cut it? Who knows, she could totally surprise. Maybe she's got some tricks up her sleeve. I think that she's gonna need them. Let's go to the next act, and this is J Yellow L. And this is another song that has not been fully released. There's only two minutes 20 of it, so there's just nothing I can do about that. We'll just listen to the two minutes 20 and see what we think. This is J Yellow L featuring Tashin, one and my secret bank. So let's go with Judas as well. That's a kind of a cool title. The quality of this audio isn't great. Oh, okay, so it's a rap song. Okay, that's cool. Last year we had a rap song as well and it actually went down pretty well. Their staging was really cool. Okay, his rapping's pretty good quality. Okay, a little bit of melody as well, this kind of like singing behind. 
I'm not picking out really a melodic hook in this rap part, other than like that kind of like hook guitar rhythm. Okay, we're almost a minute in now, and no real strong melody coming out. I'll talk about the end, but rap has to have that bridge, I feel. Okay, here's Toshi. Definitely a different feel. It's got a cooler vibe, it's more chill, it's more steady. Okay, Toshin's bit was nice there. Okay, speaking a bit about his childhood and kind of growing up not having enough money. Okay, I, I do like some of the lyrics actually, it's kind of playful. I feel like it's a little bit of an autobiographical song. Okay, here's Toshin again. It's definitely more understated than the other songs. It's not going for that pow, it's going for an intimacy, a connection with the viewer. Okay, the song's gonna cut off now, which is unfortunate, but I'm not gonna get the end of it. Okay, I got cut off now there. Okay, we're gonna listen just the last 30 seconds here. Okay, so I think it's just touching on our own then. A little bit weird that it's featuring, it does sound like more of a duet, because at the end there, that really is all touching on our own. I'm a big fan of rap in Eurovision. I really enjoyed Stephanie, which won in 2022. I really enjoyed Cha 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 last year, as you know, which came second. But those were rap songs which I felt had a bridge to the general mainstream. They had a strong melody attached to them. So Stephanie had loads of other stuff going on. It had a beautiful instrumental. It had ethnic elements. It had dancing. It had loads and loads of stuff going on. So it wasn't just a rap on its own. Same with Cha Cha Cha. Even the part at the start where he is doing pure rapping. First of all, his quality of rap is really enjoyable to listen to with the Finnish language as well. It sounded really cool. Plus he had the do, 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 do. So it was kind of like building up tension for what was the pop drop gonna be. And when he did drop into the course, it was this really strong cha-cha-cha rap course. So look, there's considerations there on how to bridge rap into the Eurovision community. This, I'm not really getting that bridge at all. This just sounds like a rap song. It sounds like an okay rap song with a very kind of minimalist melodic line. Now, again, the quality on that audio wasn't great. So maybe there is stronger. I'll have to wait and see for the live performance. There was a little bit of a guitar riff which sounded kind of pretty, but that is not the level of melodic hook that we need. And then it falls back onto his rapping. Was his rapping particularly strong? I thought it was fine. I didn't think it was like wire rapping. It wasn't like he was absolutely spitting stuff in the same way that Nicki Minaj does. When Nicki Minaj raps, I am absolutely enthralled because I'm just like, damn, she is killing it. Her rhymes, her wordplay, the way she hits every single syllable perfectly, the way she talks so quickly, just the artistry in her ability to rap. I'm not saying that he's not a good rapper, but this style of rap for me on its own without a melody isn't enough to carry a song. It's still cool to have a different viewpoint because having this rap song says to anyone who's involved in rap in Ireland, you can send a rap song in and you might get onto the Eurosong final. But for me, this isn't strong enough to qualify. Okay, let's go to our fourth entry and that is Bambi Thug singing Doomsday Blues. No, Doomsday Blue. Okay, wanna know my secret band? Ooh, okay. That's quite a different beginning. Havada Kedavra, a little bit of Harry Potter. Okay, so we're getting another edgy song. Elsha's got competition for the edginess. Oh, wow. Oh, damn. Quite a cacophonous bridge as we go into the chorus. A lot of intensity, a lot of, a bit of anger. Oh, <laughs> wow. Like going over a cliff into this much smoother, big, big mix up there. That's very cool, interesting. Yeah, it seems a blue singular. Okay, very interesting so far, definitely attention grabbing. Okay, playing with some vocal distortions there. I wonder if we should be able to do that live. I'm assuming it's female artists. Definitely pulling on like Harry Potter and a little bit of witchcraft, I feel. Okay, that bit is a bit getting on the noisy side. I wonder if that's gonna rub some people up the wrong way, but it's definitely interesting. It's different, it's unique, special. And this bit, oh, that transition, it's like going through turbulence and then you come out of the turbulence and you're flying onto like a paradise beach or something. Yeah, it's a very fun juxtaposition. Oh, and that beat coming in is very lovely as well. There's some cute songwriting here. 
Mm. Doomsday Blue. Oh. That's giving me Hollywood horror movie. Loads of ideas, fun, keeping on my toes, moving all around the place. Very exciting. How is she going to finish now? Still got 40 seconds left. Okay. Binging in some more drums now. Nice. I wonder what we're going to get visually for this. This sounds like something that accompanies a big image. Oh, bit of screaming. Okay, we're definitely getting the doom feel now. This is the end. And screeching as well. Oh, she's going to blow the grannies and let they show off their socks. <laughs> that was very what the hell is happening to your song okay there's there, there's very clearly been a conscious decision now to move away from white bread pop there's some similarities and differences between that and Elsha. so both really daring risky they have their own voice and they're kind of very uncompromising like this is me and my style love it or leave it so i really like that kind of bad bitch I have to check now. I hopefully I'm using the right pronouns. There's no pronouns on there. Oh, there is. They them. Okay, sorry. So they pronouns. Kind of like breaking down some barriers and being like something really fresh and interesting. God, this is so different to your song. Twenty your your song twenty twenty two. Let's be real. Was the blandest national final that has ever existed in national final history. It was so bland. It was white twenty five to thirty year old sigh people singing Melfest Rejects and then Brooke. <laughs> it was like Catholic Eurovision <laughs> national final. So I'm so happy that we've got this contrast now to see now we've got different types of people being represented in your song, different styles of music. This is such a massive progression in the national final in comparison to 2022. And if you look back at 2023, we saw some of that a little bit as well. There were different styles, different configurations of people on the stage. So I do feel like we're making some sort of progress. We're moving forwards in how the national final is constructed. And this act, Bambi Thug, is really exciting. Visually, now I'm looking at this Instagram and they've got so many cool, interesting looks. Loads of ideas, lots of artistry, pulling on kind of a little bit of a goth feel, but then also there feels like Hollywood elements as well, and they're cinematic, expensive visuals. It looks like they really put a lot of thought into their styling, hair, costume, the makeup. I'm so really excited to see what the visual package of this is gonna be. We know the Late Late Show does tend to have its slightly more conservative people in the audience. I think they're gonna be taken out in a stretcher because Bambi Thug is hopefully gonna blow their socks off. I don't wish ill on any of the parish grannies in the Late Late Show audience, but you know what I mean? I love this. This is brilliant. This is a step forward for the Irish National Final. People are gonna look at this and say, whoa, I didn't realize that I could get on Late Late Show with something that was this original. Oh, okay, I'm gonna apply next year. This sets the tone for next year. I think that's a contender to win. I think it totally depends on how it comes across on stage. Does it sound complete and tidy? Does it look cool? Are they gonna come up with a trick? I think that they're gonna have some sort of trick or pow moment in their visual presentation. I cannot see Bambi Thug getting up on the stage and just coyly singing into a mic, just saying bye-bye everyone and then walking off. There's gonna be some sort of an explosion. If they could have blood on the stage, would they? Maybe, I don't know, that would be kind of fun. <laughs> it would be a first for the Late Late Show. So excited, the most excited I've been for Irish Euro song ever. Let's go to our last song, we still have one person left. It's next in line and they're singing Love Like Us. So this sounds like we're going back to your song 2022 again. And I believe this is Louis Walsh's band. So I think they've performed on the Late Late Show before. So let's have a look at them. Next in line, Love Like Us, Want to Know My Secret Bank. Okay. Audio quality is a little bit lower again, unfortunately. Mm. Okay, so it feels like we're going down a little bit more of a standard Eurosong route here. Okay, nice starting though. I like the piano. It's pretty. So there's five lads here. Court pop drop. This, oh my god, <laughs> this sounds so like Wild Youth. This is Wild Youth's song again, is it? 
Oh, this is oh, this is so generic. This this is very very much uh, while you writing songs for Eurovision. And lyrically, this has got absolutely nothing. Okay, let's give it a try. I'm gonna keep going with it, obviously. That was only the first course. I think I'm particularly allergic to those type of songs because of what was sent last year. So that's why I'm very defensive already. Okay, let's go to the second course. That course, that first line of the course, is so similar to We Are One. This is a continuation of last year, learning no nothing from our mistakes. Nothing against the lads. Good, like this is a fine written song. It sounds quality done. They're singing it very well. But I'm looking at this specifically within Irish National Selection. I wonder who the songwriter is. Bill Mabry, I don't recognize the name. I, I quite like these boy band songs. I was like, I used to think, um, what's other one? This boy band. They had a lot of good songs. I actually like the melody of. This melody is, is okay. It's not very hooky. Yeah, it's going for that same anthemic feel that uh, Wild Youth had. Yeah, okay. So I, I don't want to be too harsh, so I'm gonna, uh, let me qualify this. That is just, this is, we need to move away from this. This is the wrong direction. This is going back to your song 2022. Everyone else is moving on, they're moving forward. They're saying, wow, we tried that, it did not work. We tried it again, it did not work. We tried this 10 times, it does not work. Why don't we do it an 11th time? Maybe it'll work the 11th time. It will not work the 11th time. This is the same white bread. This is, this is the whitest of white bread. It's too plain, it's too done, it's too cliche, it's contrived. This is, this is boy band music, which is definitely a big business, but we know how these boy bands are constructed. They're constructed by men in boardroom who put together guys and they're targeted towards certain demographics and they write certain songs with generic lyrics about vague love about vague girls so that that demographic can imagine that the song is about them it has a place in the music scene definitely and i do enjoy these songs sometimes when they have a strong mel melody that doesn't have a strong enough melody and in particular when we sent a not a boy band last year but an all-male band who had exactly this type of song a generic feel-good anthemic hyper inoffensive song and it didn't do well and oh this is just going backwards 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 i'm not hating on the guys look put themselves forward absolutely but i'm looking at this from an analytical perspective of what do ireland need to get out of our hole and this is the last thing we need we do not need this you know eric is kind of a little bit in the same category as well but at least that's got i think erica would do better than these guys would i th i don't i just don't see who would vote for something like that the standard now in the semi-finals is so high i just can't see someone seeing this that's just something that's really really rehashed and thinking i'm gonna pick up my phone for vote for that unless there's a lot of that target demographic watching i just don't think there's enough of them i'm a little bit worried now as well because I haven't heard an update on the voting system, but last year's voting system was that you could vote for someone as much as you want. So there were people who were posting on Twitter that they were voting 150 plus times for Wild Youth. They're super stands. And is it gonna be the same thing? Is Next in Line gonna have this big campaign where they get all of their fans into a frenzy voting 150 times? You think about that one person voting 150 times, they're canceling out 150 people who actually like another song but only vote for it one time. That's pretty messed up. I don't know why we have this rule. Why is there not a limit on how many times you can vote? Future Tom here in sunnier times. I just wanted to add in a little something to this video. So this voting situation that we likely have with your song, I wanted to see how normal that is within the Eurovision sphere. So I posted on Twitter asking people to say in their national files, how many times are you allowed to vote for one artist? In Serbia, 20 times. Slovenia, 20 times. Norway, once. Denmark, once per day, but you're allowed to vote on the days leading up to the contest. Albania, Albania five times, San Remo five times, Ukraine once, Lithuania five for the semis and 10 for the final, Australia 10 times, Poland 20, Germany 20, Croatia last year was unlimited and Finland is unlimited as well. So there are other national finals that do unlimited voting. I think the important thing with UMK in Finland is that it's so popular and so big that really someone throwing in a couple of thousand votes for someone wouldn't really make a difference because the contest is so huge. They're getting lots and lots of votes. Your song is very small and because of that reason I think someone voting 
for someone a couple thousand times could actually be enough to win the televote. We also don't get any numbers released about the televote, so we don't know how big or little it takes to win. But considering the show is pretty small, I would guess you'd need probably just a couple of thousand to win the televote. I really gotta emphasize I'm not hating on Next in Line. I have nothing against the lads whatsoever. They're young, starting their career, taking an opportunity, no problem with that. My issue is with the people behind them, the big record company, corporate music people who do have a bit of money and connections. We just saw yesterday that Next in Line filmed a TikTok with an Irish TikToker who has 500,000 subscribers. That is an access to a lot of people. And when you have people in the national final like Elsha and Bambi Thug who are independent artists and don't have that same level of support, and then you have other artists who have big bucks behind them and big influence, that starts to call into question the fairness of the final. I know it really seems like I'm hating massively, but if you said to me, this can't win, I would probably calm down a lot. I'd probably be like, oh, okay, cool, well done guys, you've got a good song. But this is really concerned that this could win because there are so many people watching that show who have no clue about your vision, who think that you need to send these formulaic songs. They really don't understand how the competition works. They're super out of touch with the European music scene. And they think that this type of like tick, 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 tick is what's gonna do it. And it really isn't. We need to move towards expanding the horizons of our national final and going back to five, 10, 15, 20 years musically is not gonna achieve that. So look, I'm genuinely concerned. I think this can win and I think it is not the right option for us. Overall though, I'm really happy with this national final. Huge progress. My main takeaway is we need to get off the late show. Everyone knows that. I'm not breaking barriers by saying that. We need a larger pool of songs as well. I have friends who are on the listening panel who told me that there were so many good songs this year from loads of different genres. There was indie bands, there was singer-songwriter males and females. We know Crew Corn put in a song which is an Irish traditional rock group who sing in Irish. We had like country sounding rap songs. There were a couple of country songs. I saw even some clips on Instagram. There was so much variety this year. We have to have semi-finals. We need at least six, six, loads of different musical styles. We need to grow this as a national final and we can't do that when RTE are just closing down. And they'll say it's because their budget's been cut, but when their budget was fine, they still didn't give an F. We need to expand, even if it's like an online voting round like Spain had in 2017, or uh, Ukraine had this year actually with their wildcard round. We need some way of like getting out more of these songs, letting people see the breadth of talent and variety that we have in Ireland. If we need to stay on the Late Late Show, at least have that, and then we have the best six voted into the final. No free tickets given because you're mates with Louis Walsh. Look, I'm excited and I'm positive. Do I think we'll qualify this year? Maybe. I don't think that's a priority. For me, the priority is the fact that this is, we're, it feels like we're progressing. This feels like an upward trajectory, finally. If you gave me an option of qualifying but no growth, we're not qualifying with lots of growth. I'm taking the no qualifying with lots of growth. So I don't care if we don't qualify. My choice, Elsha, absolutely. I thought that song was brilliant, really fun, really exciting. It's gonna really surprise people. It's something different. Our record is so bad in the last uh, nine years we've qualified once. Take a risk at this point. We haven't taken any risks. F it, let's just go for it. Let's send her, she's sending a song that's talking about the Irish language. It's got meaning. It's putting in the Irish language, but in a meaningful way. Obviously we need to see what she's doing visually, but this is my number one, definitely. I want Elsha to go, unless she flops live. Please don't flop live, Elsha, please. And please use that last 30 seconds you have on your song as well. Okay, my number two would be Bambi Thug. Even though I felt like there were some elements of it that were kind of messy, it still got me excited. I thought it was very interesting. And visually, I think they're gonna bring something really super, super cool. So there's the anticipation as well. And third place, I've got Erica Cody. Look, Erica's, committing a couple of the crimes that Let Next in Line are doing as well, but I still think it's much more fun and I think the melody is stronger. So I think she's less reliant on being five beautiful boys. She's just a badass girl with a bop and it's just a good song. I'm gonna listen to, I'm like, I'm gonna download and listen to that song. And I hope that she brings it now. I hope that Erica, if she really wants to go for that win, like go full on with the outfit, just go really crazy. Bring in a little bit of a surprise because I don't think the song doesn't have the same X factor that Elsha and Bambi Thug has. So I think if she wants to be competitive to win, she's gonna have to be weird in some way. Okay, fourth for Isabella. I thought that was actually a pretty pleasant song to listen to. J Yellow, I liked some of the rapping, some of the storytelling in the song, but just melody was just not there for me enough at all. 
and then finally next in line it's just triggering that's it needs a trigger warning at the start don't watch this if you are a euro fan who wants to progress in eurovision okay but overall i'm really satisfied and i can see now why there was so much hype on twitter because this is a very interesting final which is coming up on january 26th so what did you think please leave me a comment in the comment section down below who was your favorite who are you most excited to see? No new donations on Buy Me Coffee or PayPal, but if you want to support the channel, I'll leave links for you in the description. And thank you to all my patrons from all over the world for patronizing me on my Patreon channel. You can see the original audio for these reaction videos. You can also join our My Eurovision scoreboard and you can get updates on upcoming videos as well. So go check that out if you're a fan of the channel. You can become a free member and do like a little cute little trial if you want. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in another Eurovision analysis video very soon. Goodbye. Blah, 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 blah.